Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at how we can make the player jump. We'll be adding this to the 3D platformer series we've been building. You can download this project and the final game we're working towards by supporting us on Patreon. All the links you need can be found in the description. Ok, the first thing we need to do is define the input for jumping. We'll go to the Assets folder and double click the Input Actions file. We'll click the plus button to add another action. We'll call this Jump. We'll leave the type as Button. Then we'll expand the new action and select the binding. Now we can choose what input we want to trigger a jump. In the Path drop down, we'll select Gamepad Button South. This will bind the south button of the gamepad regardless of the model. So for example, if we use an Xbox controller, it will be the A button, but if we use a PlayStation controller, it will be the X button. We'll tick the Gamepad checkbox to say that this is for the gamepad control scheme. Next, we'll add a binding for the keyboard. We'll click the plus button and select Add Binding. Then we'll click the Path button. We'll click Listen and press the spacebar. Then we'll select this to assign it. For this one, we'll tick the keyboard and mouse control scheme. So we've now configured that we want to trigger the jump when we press the spacebar or the south button on a gamepad. Let's close this window and save when prompted. Next, we need to make use of this input. We'll navigate to the Player Scripts folder. Then we'll double click to open the player input controller script. What we're going to do is raise an event whenever the jump button is pressed that other scripts can listen to. We'll create a public event called on jump button pressed. We'll use a C sharp action as the event type as we don't need to pass any parameters. Now we need to raise this event when the input action is triggered. We called the new input action jump, so we can create a private method called onJump to listen for it being triggered. To receive the value of the input, we need to add a parameter of type input value. Inside the method, we want to check if the button has been pressed rather than released. We can do this by checking the isPressed property of the input value. If it has been pressed, we'll invoke the event. The use of the question mark here will stop an error being thrown if there are no subscribers to the event. So now, when the configured input for jumping is pressed, it will raise this event. To make use of this, we'll go to the Player Controller script. In here, we're going to execute the jump. To do this, we need to know how fast we want to jump. We'll add a float field for the jump speed. We'll add the Serialize field attribute so that we can set this from Unity. We'll also add a private Boolean field to track whether the jump has been triggered. Next, we'll create a private method that will be called when the jump button is pressed. In here, we'll simply set the Boolean field to true to indicate that the jump should be triggered. Now we need to subscribe to the Player Input Controller Jump Event and tell it to use this method as an event handler. We'll do this in the Awake method. So 
so when the event fires, it will call this method and set the Boolean field to true. Now that we know when the jump has been triggered, we need to execute the jump. We'll do this in the fixed update method. Before we apply the velocity, we'll check if the jump has been triggered. If it has, we'll set the Y component of the velocity to the jump speed. Then we need to set the boolean back to false so that it doesn't jump again on the next frame. So now if the jump button is pressed, we'll apply a positive speed in the Y direction. Let's click here to save all our scripts and switch back to Unity. We'll select the player in the hierarchy. Then we'll go to the inspector and set the jump speed to 8. Let's press play to try this out. Now we can press the spacebar to jump. There's a slight problem at the moment though. We can keep pressing the spacebar to jump higher and higher. In the next video in this series, we'll fix this by only allowing the player to jump if they're on the ground. If you want to be alerted when this one's out, then subscribe and click the bell icon. If you have any questions or feedback on this video, let us know in the comments. A big thank you to all our patrons, we really appreciate you helping to support the channel. If you'd like to help and also get access to the source code, you can find details in the description. Thanks guys!